Time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street with financial expert Rob Black. Rob, hope you had a nice Labor Day holiday weekend. We're coming back, and I'm looking at the markets. They're off a little bit, so September kind of starting with a whimper. What do you see? September could be a dramatic month in stock markets, and it is a little bit of a whimper. Higher oil prices as Saudi Arabia is cutting production or keeping lower production through the end of December. China's economy is not showing robust statistics which says the world's not really getting a lot from them, but they're also not consuming a lot in China. Interest rates are at a naggy 4.25%. Seems to work a little bit better when interest rates drift towards 4%. Um, those are the big stories of the day. So it's kind of directionless, which isn't bad. It just is, it feels kind of meh. Um, especially after a big week last week. So we're waiting on the Fed. We're waiting on some more news on the economy. But I like where we're at for the year. The NASDAQ's up over 35%. The S&P 500's up over 15%. Those are great years. Of note, in California, the Hollywood strike has now cost over $5 billion. So that's kind of hitting a lot of people in Southern California, not just the actors and the writers, but the caterers and the drivers and the dry cleaners and such. You know, it's funny, too, because I, I saw this was one of the items you, you might mention, so I'm hoping you do, about uh, trips to Europe now costing a little bit less. I have been tracking a flight because I'm trying to plan a trip at some point in the future to Rome. Never been. Would love to see it. It told me that the price for the ticket that used to be $2,000 is now like 800 something dollars. And I went to look, why is that? There's Norse Airline. There's just like these new airlines that are coming out. There's cheaper travel to Europe right now, which I found kind of surprising. What do you think's behind that? Um, well, the summer's over, and that was the big revenge demand season for the U.S. Uh, consumers to fly overseas and take pictures drinking. Uh, cappuccinos in Rome. So uh, <laughs> as we move into the fall, we got back to school. We have other yeah. things to occupy us going into the holidays. So uh, there's also some airline strikes that may happen in Europe. So they're selling $300 round trip tickets from New York to London. You mentioned an $800 ticket. Um, I, I think that's a good thing. It's a little bit deflationary. That should help the Fed see that inflation is not rampant and out of control forever and ever. But uh, if you're interested in Europe, now's the time to book if you're able to travel in you know the fall winter and spring so right worthy of note travel during those shoulder months all right and then uh let's talk a little bit about taylor swift 1989 yep. 19 dollars 89 cents 1989 the name of her album 1989 the year of her birth and that's how much you'll pay i guess to go see her on the big screen yeah as an adult this is really a kind of cool story and it just shows you how powerful her, she is and her family who kind of negotiates for her. Um, so her concert in the U.S. pulled in $4.6 billion in economic growth for the U.S. That's equivalent to about 35 countries of their GDP in the world. Um, the AMC made a deal with Taylor Swift to distribute the movie of the concert footage for Eras. Um, it's kind of documentary, so it's not just concert footage. Um, and AMC basically... Uh, stuck it to Disney and Universal, who are typically the middlemen who get about 70% of a movie's opening on the opening weekend. So AMC's doing something kind of cool. They're sharing 43% of the openings with other movie theaters. 57% is being split between AMC and Taylor Swift's family, with Taylor Swift's family getting the bulk of that. AMC will make a lot of money on the $14.99 popcorn collector's tub oh, wow. and the cups at eleven ninety nine dollars collector's edition. Um, but it's, it, adults are going to be paying you know, 1989 for a ticket, which is unheard of. And it's pricing that the government should look into, but they won't because it's not that kind of situation mm. because the laws changed in 2020. Um, but for children, it's 1313, 13, which is her lucky number twice. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not quite a senior citizen, but maybe I'll throw some gray in my hair if I want to go see it. Uh, <laughs> it just really shows you how powerful she is. Yeah. She shook up the U.S. economy this summer, and now she's shaking up the movie industry, which needs it. There's a Hollywood strike. They're not going to have a lot of movies coming out in the next year, year and a half. And on top of it, there's, um, you know, post-COVID getting staffers and getting people back in the movie theaters when yeah. we were told not to go for two years has been very difficult for the theater. So Taylor Swift is um, 
I don't want to say let's vote for Taylor for president, but she seems to be a really big economic force in more ways than one. Force to be reckoned with for sure. Okay. And then lastly, one final story for you. Uh, my son just recently went to Japan and Raina did as well. And they both came back. I guess they went to the same restaurant or maybe it's a style of restaurant. You order and the food comes to you on a conveyor belt. It arrives. You just take it off and eat it. And now I'm seeing that they've got robots serving up drinks in Vegas. Looks like a lot of these jobs are starting to get automated. You, you have this in your loser column. You don't see this as like a move forward in innovation, but a hit on uh, the workforce? Well, what do you I think, think it's a loser for yeah, young people who want jobs in Vegas coming out of college. Like ah. you and me 25 years ago could have gone to Vegas, had a great time being bartenders, and those jobs are being replaced. There's a company called Tipsy Robot. Mm. Um, they have two of them now, not one, but two of them open in Hollywood's uh, Hard Rock Cafe. Mm. Um, and it'll serve the drinks. There's one human that kind of helps the robots in case they tip uh, over a drink or in case it doesn't get filled up correctly. Right. But that's more of a service job than a bartender job. So check-in kiosks in Vegas are there now. Instead of waiting line for a human to check us in, you do it at a kiosk. Um, last time I went to Vegas, uh, I booked a restaurant through a chat bot through the hotel. Yeah. They said, what type of food do you want? What time do you eat? And made the reservation for me. So the concierge job is gone. They could serve food at restaurants to like put it on the robot. Not like a conveyor belt, but there's little robots that will drive it to the table. Um, 38 to 65 percent of all service jobs in Vegas can go away by 2035. Let me repeat, 38 to 65 percent of all service jobs in Vegas could go away. Now, they have unions and they're going to fight this. But it, it's tough to, like you say, fight progress um, when labor costs are so high and mm -hmm. there's staff shortages everywhere you go. I went to a restaurant this weekend and they didn't have enough waiters and waiters and cooks. So the half restaurant was half full, but it would have been totally full if they were able to staff properly. Interesting. Okay, Rob, thank you. As always, we'll chat with Rob again tomorrow. Let him know if there's a topic or a company you want him to talk about. Facebook, Twitter, you got his handles there. You can reach out. You can always send him an email too at rob at robblack.com.